But these days I've been really getting into a device called the Neuronic, which is a, a white plastic headset that's full of LED lights. And the lovely thing about the Neuronic is you can do sustained red light therapy, photobiomodulation for sort of mitochondrial boosting across uh, the whole brain. You can do targeted uh, regions, which is kind of fun with the Neuronic. But more importantly, what I'm really getting excited about is using brain mapping to find things in a brain that might be a little iffy or quirky and then using the red light therapy in a pulsed way. So I'm saying light entrainment seems to be a little different than auditory entrainment. Light entrainment, red light pulsing seems to create some response in the brain. So we're still just barely getting into it. I hear you. Huh. I'm very sorry. That was oh, entirely my fault. I because the because the um the tree surgeon was going so mad outside. I'm I muted my um my mic for a sec. No but I, was, I was just saying, Andrew, is this something that people can buy? They can. Yeah, Neuronics are an international company. Um, you can go on their website and purchase it. I think the coupon Dr. Andrew Hill might save you a little bit of money. Um, but more more importantly than the device, again, is what you do with it. So. What I would encourage folks to do if they get a any photobiomodulation, the neuronic is my favorite one, but before you start jumping in and doing red light stim, look at your brain. Figure out where in your brain, where in your cortex, you may have unusual frequencies or stuff that's stuck or inflammation, and that will actually give you the ability to target the photobiomodulation to your brain in a way that is targeted but not as finicky or as subtle as measuring electricity in real time, which is a lot more in the weeds so i'm a big fan of the neuronic and we're doing a lot of um, brain mapping now looking at resting baselines designing protocols for the neuronic and then mapping again a few months later and without doing neurofeedback just using stimulation you can actually see changes especially in some of the gross features of fog and speed of processing and the metabolic stuff so i'm a big fan of photobiomodulation pbm for the metabolic end of the pool you know, post-COVID brain fog, concussions, accelerated aging, um, mold exposure, Lyme exposure, heavy metal exposure, these neuroinflammatory signatures. And folks might be interested to know in a brain map, in a QEEG, and a concussion looks just like post-COVID, looks just like Lyme or mold exposure. You can't really tell the difference from the causes of brain fog at a high level. It all roughly looks the same. Mm -hmm. So we get a lot of people with these sort of autonomic phenomena on top of the psychological, if you will, phenomena these days. Some of that's, I think, the environmental stuff with COVID. But um, I'm a big fan of the PBM stuff when you are trying to take the whole system and do something broad to it, like anti-aging, recovery from a brain fog or an injury. So yeah, Neuronics uh, Neuradiant 1070 device is my new favorite uh, toy. Uh, not a toy, it's, it's kind of expensive, but I've been using it a lot personally and noticing really interesting effects. I mean, everything I do, I generally do to myself before I mm -hmm. um, recommend them for other people. Not so, you know, I'm 25 years plus into doing this stuff. So not every single neurofeedback protocol do I, you know, try as I, but at the, the photobiomodulation I was resistant to for a long time because I thought it fell in the same category as these binaural beat type of devices which mm. i don't believe in and yet i got one my hands on one and was like oh okay this this does something this feels like something and then i started looking at brain maps before and after doing red light therapy and you can see changes you can see changes wow. built up over a few months so i think it's and a it's lovely... shining light at different frequencies and at different time zones sort of timings around your scalp i guess yeah yeah there's a it's four quadrants in the central strip and you can sort of decide which quadrant is lit up and you can decide if it's a straight glow of red light 1070 nanometer light which feeds mitochondria or you can pulse the light in a brainwave frequency which might actually work on the frequency the brain is struggling with. It might enhance that frequency cool. is the theory. Seems to work in the data. I don't yet know the mechanisms fully. So I'm a little cautious about saying, you know, okay. how it works. But we're getting data changes that are similar to what you might get from the fine tuning. It just works on a different set of uh, goals often. So sometimes with biohacking clients, I'll combine, you know, we'll do neurofeedback and EEG work and creativity and anxiety and peak performance. Might add some red light therapy. We might give them biohacking coaching around macronutrients or fasting. Um, 
but it's a little bit different person to person. So you have to, again, I'd encourage folks, my, my one not criticism, but concern about the biohacking world, the, the, the industry, if you will, the marketplace, is that people are often looking for a solution. They're often suffering in some way and they're like, well, what's the best solution I can buy for this problem? And there's this sort of consumerist, you know, let me grab the next thing, the next thing, the next thing and try to find the best thing. Sometimes you just need the right knowledge and what to do, not the best device. So mm. again, think about goals, not symptoms, solutions, not diagnoses, and then you're able to architect your way there. And I, I think the red light therapy is a really interesting tool uh, for a lot of stuff that the, the fine tuning of, of the EEG isn't quite as effective for.